What's going on everybody? My name is Aaron with Aaron Miller Media and today we're going to talk about this guy right here. It's the Mix Pre 3. It's by Sound Devices and it is an incredible recorder. Um, it is something I've been using for uh, close to a year and it has been phenomenal but it's also unbelievably confusing. There's not much stuff about it uh, on the interwebs interwebs who says that um and so i kind of wanted to just walk through how i use it uh, there's going to be other ways to use it but i'm mostly a wedding filmmaker and i do some commercial stuff as well on the side and this uh workflow that i have with it is perfect and so maybe it'll help someone else out there that's a wedding filmmaker and can't wrap their mind around how to work this thing so yeah let's get started <laughs> This is the case that I bought, I'll link it below. And I love it because um, basically it fits this Mix Pre 3 and this battery that lasts me about four to five hours. So a full wedding day. I could probably get two full wedding days out of it, but I always charge it for the next day because you can never be too prepared. Um, so it fits those two like perfectly. Um, here, we'll. So it fits them perfectly like that, and you got this little divider there. So I'll link that below. I do think, unfortunately, this specific um, battery, it's its an Anchor one, um, no longer exists. Couldn't find it on Amazon. Don't know what's up with that. Um, but uh, there should be comparable ones. You just want power delivery, and it'll last you. If it's 10,000 milliamps like this one, it'll last you a while, plenty of time for a full day shoot. Okay, um, in, in the top, as you can see here, there's uh, my, my USB-C cable and then I got headphones in case I wanna check that I'm getting a clean signal. Um, I think there's a misconception that this thing will make your audio better. You're still gonna get as good of audio um, as you're given, right? And so if you have your own mic set up and you're rolling with that, then, uh, and you know it's quality, it's good stuff, then it's gonna sound good. Um, but a misconception that's very common is that this is gonna make your audio sound better. 32-bit float does not make your audio sound better. What it does is it helps you in post-production. The way it will make your audio sound better is if you're unable to monitor your audio and see if you're clipping. That's um, where the workflow is. It gives you latitude to pull that and to retain that information. Um, but yeah, a lot of people think that your audio is gonna sound better. Um, that's one reason why I didn't get too hyped on the new Zoom lavalier microphone because the Tascam DR10L with the safety track has never clipped for me. It's never been an issue. Um, it works perfect. So um, yeah, basically this just helps you out because I, I don't ever have to worry about my audio levels. Um, I, you shouldn't get lazy, like you should try to get good audio levels, but this will help you out significantly if you are having um, trouble. Um, well, if you're a solo shooter or whatever, you don't want to be running back and forth and make sure your audio is sounding good, especially when the DJ's like manning the trim. Um, so anyways, that's my way too long disclaimer. Um, sorry about that. Let's uh, get into the meat of this thing. So the two affordable 32-bit float um, devices on the market right now are this guy and the Zoom F6. And so I am not gonna get into like a comparison thing between these two. I just chose this because um, the preamps are apparently better. And I trust that because it's sound devices and they make some quality stuff. I'm sure the Zoom one is fine too. But I'm um, not gonna get into that. You can do your own research on that. So let's get started with how to operate. So we'll start out by plugging in our USB-C battery. A lot of people um, want to roll with, uh, the, I hear the double A's don't last long at all. That's not worth it. You can get a Sony NPF battery like sled, I guess they call it, I think, and use those. That's fine. I didn't want to spend the extra money and I didn't want the extra bulk. Um, this is great for me. And I have an unbelievable amount of uh, USB-C power banks, so I can power the, I, I have four different power banks I can power this off of, so that made the most sense to me. So I'm gonna set this here, make sure it's in focus. Um, let me actually 
fix that. Two hours later. Okay, so once you get this plugged in and ready to go, you're gonna hit a switch right here, it's gonna say on. It's in a bad position, I'm not gonna lie. Um, it's right under the USB-C cable. I don't love that. Okay, the first thing you're gonna want to do is make sure that you're in advanced mode for these um, settings. And so the first thing you're gonna do is click this hamburger icon right here. And then you're gonna scroll over, you click the menu thing, you'll scroll over twice, go to system, and then you'll go to advanced mode, not basic, okay? Once you do that, it's gonna like reset every setting that you had. I don't know. Um, and it's gonna look a lot different now. Okay, and so for me, what I do is I record to one channel always. Um, the thing is, if you arm multiple channels, it doesn't matter if it's getting a signal or not, it's going to record to that channel, um, if that makes sense. And so um, I wanted to save storage because I knew I was getting 32-bit float. I was fine. I didn't need extra channels at different levels or whatever. Um, and so I only typically record with one mic. If I was recording with two, then I would arm a second one. So I'm gonna show you real quick how to set it up with just one microphone, okay? I know I was looking everywhere because I have so many cameras. I'm not used to this and monitors. Sorry about that. So we click this button here. And when you click one of these buttons, it's actually that track that you're controlling. So one, two, three, we have three preamps in here. That's why it's called the Mix Pre 3. There's a Mix Pre 6. I imagine it would be the exact same, but with more channels and it would be bigger. Um, I don't need that. So that's why I want this. So what you're gonna do is you want to set up each track. And so um, basically the main thing is your gain here. So you click this and you can now control your gain. I've noticed that I typically keep it at about, um, I would say that 75% or um, 60%, something around there. And um, aside from that, you want it to be armed. So if you wanted to record the second one, you would do the same. You'd click on this, arm, okay? but we don't want that because we don't want extra um, memory. It, it would basically be double because you're, uh, you're recording multiple tracks to this. We're recording one because that's all we need. And we want our low cut off, we want um, solo. Uh, to, to hear it back, you need solo on, strange enough. Um, but yeah, that's what works. And so um, we click here. We don't need phantom power, so we can turn that off if we are recording um, from the, the PA system or um, whatever it is, like say you plug into the PA system, if you even have um, a dynamic microphone, we'll talk about this in a little bit. If you have one of these, then you also don't need phantom power. When you need phantom power is with a, um, a mic that requires 48 volt phantom power. So anyways, um, phantom off for right now, if we're talking about the, the DJ booth, input, we will actually go to line. So that's the bulk of it. Now you literally can push record and you're recording to this track number one. Yeah, so you see how it's red there? That means you're recording to track number one. Now what I'm not doing is recording to the left and right tracks of this thing. Again, that's more data. What you could do if you really wanted to is record to the left and right track and one, and, and you're given now three different tracks of the same and you can uh, gain stage it so you know for sure you're not gonna clip. But you probably don't need to do that because you're probably not gonna clip with 32-bit float audio. So let's backtrack a little bit. Let's make sure we're in 32-bit float and um, let's set it up to where you're only recording to just that one track. Okay, you're gonna click your little hamburger again and go to record. And at record, you're gonna turn record left and right off, okay? So make sure you can see what I'm doing here. You're gonna click this icon to scroll to the next menu, and you're gonna click off. Um, what you could do is left and right, and then you can adjust them um, individually. Again, then your, your, your 64 gigabyte card is gonna fill up three times as fast. It's not worth it to me to do that. So let's go back. And from here is where you could change your right gain 
your left gain um, to be to have gain staging basically. You want your sample rate to be 48 because that syncs best with uh, 24 frames a second. Okay, and in that record uh, menu system is where we change it to 32 bit float right here. We want to make sure it says float. 32 bit is not the same as 32 bit float. So we want float in there. That gives you that um, insane flexibility to um, take back audio that has clipped or um, raise audio that's way too quiet. So um, without increasing uh, preamp noise and stuff like that. So yeah, here we are. That is, that is really the bulk of this thing. And, and I don't want to overwhelm with too much information. We want to make sure we're recording to um, SD card. We're actually, we don't have an SD card in right now, as you can see. And aside from all that, like this has literally become a plug and play device for me. The only time that changes is when I'm using a microphone. So right now I have it set up for um, my weddings. When I'm not using my own mics, I'm plugging into their line. Now, if I'm plugging into the back of a microphone receiver, then you're gonna have to do this as well. So what we're gonna see now is if you're setting it up for a microphone. So we will click our one track. So now after you get that set up, what I just showed you, now you just have to click this to change anything, your, your track one, and you can change your gain here. You push over one, and now you go from line to mic. And if you need phantom power, then you can turn it on. Um, you have to actually, it's kind of weird, you have to click there back to it, and now you can turn phantom power on. But uh, we won't need phantom power for the mic we're gonna use here. So we're gonna plug this in. I had to get an SD card, forgot about that. So it plugs into the back here. I actually took this thing off and I don't use it. it, it you have to take it off. Um, I don't even have the cover. I don't know where it is, I'm not gonna lie. Um, you don't need that if you're using USB-C batteries and if you're not using double A's, so. Okay, so now you should see levels. Um, we're gonna hit record. So this is, this is the workflow for a microphone. So, um, like I said, you push here, you swirl over, go to mic instead of line. Okay, now let's hit record. Now we're recording and we are talking directly into this microphone. Like I said, this is a dynamic mic, so we didn't need phantom power. Um, I'll show you the beauty of 32-bit float audio. Um, it, it's mind-blowing that we have access to this these capabilities for under a grand. It's crazy. So, um, yeah, say that a toast giver just gets far too um, excited, and I, I'm, I'm not a yeller, so I'm not going to, I'm going to simulate it. And now their audio is peaking like crazy, right? Um, well, we're going to be able to recover that in post or say granny gets up and gives a speech and now she's talking really quiet and, uh, you know, the levels are just unbelievably low. Um, that might be too low. I don't know if that'll work, but yeah, just the levels are so low. As you can see, they're just, they're barely hitting a uh, negative 40 decibels, you know? And so, um, and so yeah, n now we can recover this information and make it sound pretty good without uh, increasing too much noise in here. So that's the beauty of 32 bit float audio. Um, I, I wanted pretty much, I'm going to stop talking on this. I wanted pretty much a, a no nonsense, just how to use this thing to get up and running really quickly. Um, it took me a while to, to really figure out that I had to manually arm each track. And so um, if we stop recording, as you can see here, uh, so what it's doing now, actually, it's in, you see it flashing for a few seconds. That means it's backing up to this thumb drive that's plugged into the side right there. So that's, that's what that meant. So um, yeah, but we can arm this track. And now you see it, one, two, uh, if you wanted to have two plugged in. But again, I just wanted to real quick show you how to use this thing because I spent so much time figuring this thing out.
That's gonna be it for me. Thank you so much. If you made it this far, please like, subscribe, and, and comment. Let me know what you think about the Sound Devices Mix Pre 3 Mark II. Um, yeah, it's been fun. I hope that this helps someone out there. Um, and, and just that way you don't have to spend 20 hours trying to figure this thing out like I did. So yeah, I will catch you guys in the next one. Later.